Well, I wanted to show you guys the, the trailer, but it's snowing. And so I just did alignment over here. It took three hours. <laughs> Most of it was me trying to back because they wanted me to back. Uh, so I would have to basically, I went in there like facing this way, right? That's the entrance. I came like this. And then the guy says, well, we wanted to back in there, but you know, because I kept the um, uh, the booster, got lazy yesterday, right? So now uh, with the booster, I locked the booster, like there's not enough room in there. I cannot back, right? So I said, okay, well, no big deal. I'm a master backer in disguise. So I said, let me just go back out, turn around and then back all the way but it would be extremely difficult because it's all blind side and first I have to back out into that street without seeing anything and so I tried a couple of times then the these guys have their own shunt uh, shunt truck with a single axle you know and of course he has a just a day cab so it's much shorter and he can see much better right and so the guy says uh how heavy is your how heavy is this trailer can i pick it up with a single axle truck <laughs> to me that was funny so because you know the trailer looks so massive that he thought it was it was way heavy i said no the trailer itself is twenty-seven thousand, right uh, but of course when you pick it up uh, part of the weight will be on the wheels right and what helps is that he has a hydraulic uh fifth wheel you know all these shunt truck guys they have a hydraulic fifth wheel and uh, and so basically i dropped the trailer facing that way and i put some boards under so i can drive away without using the hydraulics so the you know the right height things were still locked because you're not supposed to unlock them. Um, because yeah, I can adjust uh, the height with uh, with um, with my hydraulics, but then but then I won't be able to lock. You know those teeth. You're not supposed to move it, especially when you're turning. They they should be locked, like on the neck, right? Um, you can go straight. Sometimes I did that uh, when I was at uh, Hail Trailer. It was the same story. The guy with the shunt truck. He says, drop your trailer, but make make it. Uh, tall enough so that I can hook up to it or low enough whatever but for me the big deal is to try to drive from under right so I need to create a gap between the fifth wheel and the trailer otherwise it'll it'll fall down like ask me how I know because it happened before I cannot just drop it like a regular van right there has to be a gap between the fifth wheel and so we try to put three boards it was not enough like when I dropped the suspension, there was still no gap. I, I raised it up, put the fourth board, dropped it, still no gap. And we had to put like a bunch of, I had to undo all my boards and all these heavy boards, but the guys were helping. All right, what's going on? Why do we have this? And it's plus one, so 274K or 33F. And, um, they had the bolts you know they replaced the bolts because he says yeah those bolts are not reusable and i said how do you put them in because the head is the head is uh, round like how do you hold that side you know the bolt and there's a bolt and a nut and the bolt just has a round weird head and he says no he says on top of that round head there's a, there's a weird looking tip that you use the wrench and he says that tip when you tighten it the tip breaks at a certain uh, psi you know when you reach the necessary uh, pressure that tip just breaks and he says when it when it breaks off that's when you know that you have the proper tension and he says that's why you cannot you cannot reuse them you know like very super interesting design and but i look in the back and it looks a bit funny that 
you know, I thought those holes in the washers were supposed to be in the same spot on both sides of the axle, but what they did now, like on one side, let's say that hole, you know, the hole in the washer is like this way and on the other side it's this way. But I said, guys, are you sure? Oh yeah, we did both axles. All right, so now let's, I'm just afraid that once I go on the road, it'll start dog tracking like crazy, you know? And these guys can do pretty much anything. It's called Chief's Collision. Chief's Collision in uh, Kitchener. Turn right onto Queen's Road. Uh, they do heavy truck collision so they can uh, they can straighten they have special machines you know like when the truck was in a, in an accident they can uh, straighten the frame they you know the one that was twisted Continue on the road for two kilometers. they can cut your frame they can extend your frame you know like they do a real serious work and I see a couple of uh, broken uh, broken trailers I'm just checking to see if the trailer is dog walking. I don't know. It looks okay. At least the, the boost, I thought, you know, you know, the worst case is you're driving and it's like this, you know, like the trailer like this, the boost is like, the boost is always straight because the boost articulates, right? So if the boost is pulling to the side, what happens is that the articulation point helps to keep it straight but then the trailer starts to compensate so if the booster pushes this way the trailer pushes this way and that's what was happening no look straight we'll see once we get to the uh, freeway so now we just need to get to this main road here so these guys yeah they can do alignment they can do um, repair i talked to them before i'm trying to remember what i wanted to do something on my on my international um maybe i was talking to them about uh, axle ratio change or maybe i wanted to add the lift axle because i at one point i was thinking about this you know shall i buy a new truck because i like the engine on that on that yellow beast the engine was great but it still already had 850,000 miles and the whole truck was getting rusty you know like the frame the the cab and the uh, rust is one problem like uh, this my Chinese friend Mark has another guy and they both drive they like they love Volvo you know I don't know what is it about Chinese and Volvo trucks but both of these guys have uh, Volvo trucks and so this guy Mark his truck is 2006 I think he has uh, 1.2 on 1.3 million and his friend uh, Jackie has an older truck but again it's, it's been his only truck that crazy guy has like 1.8 basically almost two million miles with no overhaul and they both have Cummins Cummins uh, X15 um, and so that's why you know that's what it was talking to these guys that was one of the reasons I went with with uh, Kenworth and the Cummins engines because I see how these guys it's just amazing but you know the the engine is very very durable you know of course they don't do heavy haul they were both they both started with uh, uh, tankers they were pulling tankers and then one of them under my under my um, influence went into flatbed step deck and uh, the other one tried something else and then he also went back to continue for six kilometers
Yeah, I didn't want to hit the curb with my shiny brand new brand newly aligned flip axles. I'd rather go with the left wheel on the on the midsection there. Oh, so what I started saying is that that guy that has almost 2 million miles, the engine is still good. The transmission is good. He replaced the clutch, I think, a couple of times. But the main problem, uh, why, why he's uh, actually now thinking about getting a second truck, I mean another truck, is the uh, rust. Rust on, on the frame. Like his frame becomes dangerously uh, thin. Because you know that's what happens when it's uh, rust. It's not just bad looks, right? It it eats metal. And so he he's at a point where his uh, frame basically gets holes in it, you know. So and that's the weakest the weakest point of any truck is the frame. Because you know what do you do? And these guys, the collision guys, so yeah, that's what, they can do some real serious work. But I don't need anything else done. That's what I, I wanted to do, the, uh, the alignment. And now, of course, you see this? No check engine light. It disappeared uh, when I entered Canada yesterday. But I do have an appointment. I have an appointment with a shop in uh, Aberfoyle. So I still gonna go because I hope that that fault is uh, recorded, has been recorded. You see, that's Canadian price. So uh, diesel is green, gas is red. So one of four dollar four point nine per liter that's gas the cheapest gas and diesel is 99 cents 99.3 per liter which is not bad uh, back in when I came to Canada like in 92 no 93 94 when I started driving it was about 75 cents Canadian per liter and then overnight it jumped to 95 i remember it became like 20 cents and then it ke it kept going up over the years dollar dollar five dollar ten and then uh, this idiot trudeau introduced some stupid tax and on january 1st a couple of years ago all of a sudden the fuel price jumped up by like 15 cents and I'm like what the heck yesterday was a dollar why is it dollar 15 now oh you haven't heard a new tax uh, Trudeau introduced new tax and that's why over here when we had elections Trudeau is a Democrat but over here he keeps increasing you know all these taxes and stuff and so I voted for uh, conservatives Kind of like Republicans in uh, in U.S., right? But in U.S., I I'm with Democrats. But in Canada, I'm tired of Democrats because they keep increasing taxes on everything. And I voted for conservatives; they lost. And Trudeau was uh, elected for the second term. But now the prices went down on uh, fuel because of all this oversupply right a couple of, i think it's been for a couple of years now so that the prices stayed pretty much the same they were in uh, like a 95 97. look at this weather i thought we were done with the snow not so fast said mother nature And I checked into a facility uh, voluntarily into a hotel I mean and I'm booking the hotel using my favorite uh, priceline.com um, I 
and I found a hotel where they have parking. Remember yesterday I was talking where, where I'm gonna sleep and then I thought about this hotel. I see guys parked there in the back. You can just come through a back street and you can park the entire tractor trailer there on a small street. There's no signs, you know, right behind the hotel. And so that's what I did. I went to the hotel in the truck. I didn't even bother going to, uh, to my parking lot. That's where I'm going now. I'm gonna park the truck and get my car. But yesterday, yeah, I parked near the hotel and from the truck, uh, I just logged on the in internet and I found this hotel behind which I was parked and I said, okay, give me four nights. It was $63 Canadian per night plus fees. I think the total was uh, $305 Canadian with taxes and fees because Priceline charges fees, right? Okay, so I punch in my my credit card info, click submit, and that little wheel starts spinning on the screen, kind of like hold on. We are sending the your reservation information to to the hotel, and then after a few seconds, it says, "Oops, looks like this hotel is no longer available." Okay, I close that screen. I go back to the list of available hotels refresh the screen and that hotel is still there still 63 bucks so i try again this time the wheel is spinning it says success your reservation is confirmed will we send you an email okay so i go check my email all of a sudden i see two confirmations you know it's called itinerary Dear Mr. Drachev, here's your itinerary for Friday and then at least the hotel and I see fully paid $305. I open the second one, $305. I go to my bank website, I check my visa, sure enough, shows two pending charges of $305. So even though the first attempt was unsuccessful, it still booked it. I'm telling you, I hate when they do this. And so I call Priceline, some guy, and I, I, I could tell that he's Russian because he was talking English, but with a heavy, kind of like my accent, but much, much uh, heavier. And I tried to explain to him what happened. He put me on hold like 20 times at two minutes each. And then he comes back and he says, I'm sorry, sir, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> so what the heck are you talking about? You want me to pay $610 for four nights at the two-star hotel? I said, I'm a platinum member. If you look at the at my file, you will see that I, I spend a lot of money with you guys. Like, what, there's nothing you can do? Can I talk to you? And he's like, oh, our system is very complicated. You know, once it's uh, put in, because it's prepaid, uh, there's nothing we can do, which is doesn't seem like a like a legitimate reason and they're asking for a supervisor some girl comes on she says this is Maria I think we have an accident over here The guy sits on a heel, right? So why can it, can you not just release your brakes and you know move the car to the side? No, he's just sitting in the middle of the road, and of course all guys behind him have no clue. You know, like they they never look far far enough ahead. Oh yeah, the guy doesn't even have blinking lights. That's not good. And like I said, there's an incline. Why you cannot just? So anyway, this Maria chick says, uh, I said, are you the supervisor? She says, no, I'm senior specialist. I said, where's the 
Where's the supervisor? Drink, drinking on the job? And she tells me the same song that no, once the money is paid, it cannot be refunded. And I've been with them a long time, so I know what they can do it, right? It's not my fault. It's not my fault that the system charged me twice. It told me it was not available. So anyway, I said, I need to talk to a supervisor. And she's like, okay, but the, the supervisor is working from home because of COVID-19, so she'll have to call you back. Uh, what's your phone number? So I give her my cell number and I wait. I'm like, can I go to the hotel? I don't want to check in because I have two reservations, right? And um, five minutes, 10 minutes, nobody's calling me back. So I call again, just hoping maybe this time I'll get a different uh, uh, associate, you know, and he or she will know uh, more than those, those guys. And guess what? My, 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 my plan worked. I got a different guy. This guy had no problem understanding my situation. And I'm sitting inside the hallway inside the hotel and the clerk says uh, just tell him to call me uh, I'm gonna cancel one reservation and just tell him to call me and I'll confirm she says they're lying to you they can do it I work with them all the time and she says I'm always fighting with them because they they're lying to customers and so I'm talking to this guy and I said uh, the lady behind the desk says you can call her and confirm and he puts me on hold, he talks to her, comes back, she, he says, yep, we cancel one reservation, is there anything else, Mr. Drachev? I said, no, that's it, thank you for your help. <laughs> like, different people, and I said, maybe you should tell your supervisor, I said, this is what happened with your colleague, they were trying to screw me over, and they were telling me it's, it's impossible to uh, cancel the reservation, which I know is not true. Anyway, so that was a weird, weird experience. So next time, if I see a message like that, hotel is not available, before I do it again, I'll wait five, 10 minutes and I'll check my email to see if, if it did go through, you know? Or if you guys do it, there's, there, there's quite often there's an option which says pay at the hotel. You know, you just, they just use your, um, your uh, credit card to secure the reservation. They don't charge it and you just pay at the hotel. So I think that's the best way. That's what I'm gonna do, uh, do next time. But if not all hotels are available, but it'll say uh, payment of the hotel is available. So that's the, for me now, that's the preferred option. Yeah, not a very good day for driving today, that's for sure. But it's plus one, so I shouldn't have any trouble with my uh, mighty Challenger. And it's 20 minutes to uh, two, Saturday. So I'm just gonna park the, park the rig, I'm not gonna disconnect. I don't think I'll be in the way over there in the parking lot during the weekend because Monday I'm coming back and I'm taking the truck. Uh, to the shop, so like I said, I'm hoping to... to uh, I hope they will be able to find that... that error message. is happening I got another order for my book again if somebody wants to buy my my audiobook uh, 
heavy hole secrets just send me an email and uh, submit the payment via paypal.me slash Sergey Drachev it's uh, $35 US and uh, the link is in, in, is in the description under each video if you go into description it'll tell you what to do if, you, if you'd like to buy this book Lots of accidents today. Oh yeah, the trailer looks good. Everything is even. I'm looking at my uh, rear wheels on the truck and the fenders and the uh, position, like a relative position on the front of the trailer. I see how much of the trailer is on each side. I added uh, Google Maps allows me to add uh, add uh, when there's a cop sitting on the road they call it mobile speed camera it used to be called something else now they changed the name so now if somebody else will be, is driving and using Google Maps uh, Google will warn them beforehand saying that there's a there's a speed camera ahead and actually you know when I bought these uh, when I bought this truck right I never aligned I never check alignment of the flip axles you know and maybe maybe at the factory you know like this they're supposed to do it right but I don't know if they did or not all right so here we have to go we have to go in the middle here yeah I need I need two lanes otherwise I'm gonna hit somebody with a with the rear of the trailer Just going this way. Very smooth. I'm a smooth operator. All right, so now I'm just going to my parking lot grab my car and I'm gonna move my uh, I got a big bin with the dirty laundry so I gotta transfer it to the car and grab my backpack with my computer and so yeah I'm taking it easy until uh, Tuesday I booked the hotel until Tuesday so yeah Monday we're gonna take care of the truck Check engine light and uh, I'm coming, I'm like thousand kilometers away from uh, having to do grease. So maybe once, uh, while the truck is in the shop, I can ask him to do grease and uh, maybe change the, my fuel filter. Because I've been getting a lot of restriction, uh, even though I can do it myself, but since they have the truck, right, why not? For them it's much faster and I have the filter. And I also uh, I need to change the uh, secondary fuel filter. We'll see. Yeah, I see in this weather I cannot shoot outside because the camera, the lens will be covered by, by snow and moisture. 